Welcome to the Common Geeky Program, a book club podcast where each week three of us read up on a topic and then discuss it from a geeky nerd perspective. Don't sound so excited, bro. Uh, this week marks the end of cycle 10, meaning each one of our eight cast members is hosting an episode. Woo! To end each cycle, we have a special geek news centered pro- uh, pro- program uh, called a common beat group <laughs> common beefing program no common this is not <laughs> we did have one of those see the terrible part keenan is that like i i swear to god the last like three people who hosted a common briefing program said cycle x and this is the one where it actually would have made sense for you to do that roman numerals <laughs> oh, yeah, hashtag rome the joke <laughs> hashtag still live. uh to end each cycle we have a special geek news centered episode called the common beef uh, <laughs> to end each uh cycle we have a Third special geek news program called a common briefing program you get the joke there uh it's a more relaxed episode format where we focus on current events in the nerd world and all of us three uh and all three of us uh, try to bring different stories to the table. I'm your host, Keenan Kodish, and I'm joined by my friends here. Uh, hi, I am Jeff Levitt, and I forget, do I say what I'm talking about yet? Or no, that, you just you just, no. you just just say your fucking name, okay? Okay, my name is Jeff Levitt, and I'm repping Jeff Levitt, apparently. My fucking name is Patty Ice, let's go. Patty Man, Ice I like official. the aggression that we're starting off with, I love it. <laughs> Let's keep it into our discussion. I got some super hot fire for you later. All right, so even each of us will have a few fire minutes to mention ice. what we believe is important uh, or has an impact or an interesting development in our domains. We keep them with some open discussion amongst the group before we be- end with our rating section, in which we will all vote on our favorite uh, story and award a gold star to our best representative. So uh, let's just kind of like jump right into it. Uh, I'll go first because I'm frankly more important than you peasants. Uh, but oh, hey, Keenan, Keenan. Okay. Well, let's um, excuse me. Let's let's try to do real good on on uh, keeping within the time limits today. You mean like twelve minutes each? Okay, that was the plan, Jeffrey. Okay, I'm, I'm just you would... letting you know. I'm putting it down on the table. You're cutting into my time on the chronograph. We're already. I literally. I timed this so that way. I'm For thirty-one thing, seconds. I'm starting another t- stopwatch. I'll just right do now. myself. See, new stopwatch, Keenan, spelled wrong. <laughs> So what I want to talk about is what I'm sure is the most important thing that we're going to discuss. Uh, For those of you who don't know, the greatest uh, animated achievement in history, one would say arguably the greatest storytelling achievement in history. That's right. Yu Yu Hakusho is getting two new episodes. Uh, They're going to release their 25th. Yeah, just two. I mean, well, you know, well, two or three, depending on But more to come. Or they uh, just no, they're just uh, it's being boxed with the anime. It's, the anime's 25th anniversary is getting a Blu-ra- Blu-ray box uh, collection. So okay. they're going to release an OVA, which will adapt um, a bonus chapter. Uh, bonus chapter. <laughs> a chapter. bonus chapter. Well, it, uh, the Blu-ray box collection will adapt a bonus chapter from, okay. I think, the seventh volume is what they're saying. Uh, called Two Shot, as well as one of the, um, like, what's the word? Penultimate? Penultimate chapters, um, called All of no- Nothing. All nice. or Nothing. What is, uh, what is Yu Haka show about again? For those of you who don't know, which means, unfortunately, you're probably dying in the Middle Ages, because how could you not know about Yu Haka show? But let's pretend. No. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, I know of it. I don't really know anything your, about your it. Your parents mm-hmm. didn't raise you right. Um, <laughs> anyway, you clearly didn't go to church, or else you wouldn't know about this. Yu Hakusho is anime about a classic, it's a very classic setup, you know. Uh, high school boy dies. He's a delinquent, oh. you know, but <laughs> he comes back as a spirit detective, and he works for, you know, the spirit world, fighting demons and stuff. And then he meets some friends, Same, and then, you know, honestly. who also have spirit abilities, and then he meets some demons, and he makes friends with those, and then he kind of, like, goes and, you know, fights demons and stuff for the good of the world. But he makes friends with the demons. Not all of them. He makes friends with some, some of them. some good Pat. demons and some bad demons? There's mostly bad demons. Maybe they're just, like, people, Pat, where, you know, they're all areas of gray. But he's calling them demons, that's what I'm saying. They are like, demons. Are they good or bad, or are there more? Well, they're demons, it's their species. Okay. You know, I'm clarifying. Por que no los dos? Just let me ask my question, Jeff. <laughs> You want you want to ask a question without getting shit for it? What what yes. program are you a part of, Pat? <laughs> I didn't realize we were on the beefing program still. <laughs> uh, well, actually, one of the um, episodes will be about how Hiei and Karama, two of the main cast and two of the demon cast, by the way, uh, met 
which will be very interesting. And so I'm it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a prequel kind of thing. Yeah, or uh, more like a flashback type deal. Uh, a little bit more of a prequel, I guess, because like the issue is, it was a chapter. It was like a bonus chapter that was like a flashback in the manga, and it's like set not at the end of the manga. So I guess it's it's kind of like a weird flashback hmm. that we never saw, kind of a thing. Oh. You know, like yeah, it had so to it's have, like, like a it's like a like a double flashback flashback type situation. I suppose it's only because. Because, like, at the time it wasn't, it was a flashback, but now that, like, we're past it, it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, y- you mean that it, it already was a thing in the manga, but they just didn't make an episode about that particular arc in the show or whatever? Yeah, it's, okay, yeah, it's and like now a, they are. Yeah, it's like a Captain America flashback in the Marvel movies now. Like, we're already way past that, but if they were like, oh, hey, there's a deleted scene in Captain America, yeah. wouldn't that be weird? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah, like that. Yeah, you I know. see that. Um, so it's just in the middle, but it's still very exciting. Also, um, the returning, at least in the Japanese, uh, it's going to be the same director and storyboarder and the same studio, as well as uh, the voices of the main cast will be the same, at least for the Japanese uh, version. So I don't know if the American people when, have like signed how up. Long ago, how long ago was the last this, episode of the anime? Like I said, it's the 25th anniversary of oh. the... Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, so it's going to be... It will ship on the... Four, at least as part of the fourth part, will be on October 26th, which okay. also brings me to my second uh because it is anime season it is like time for fall animes to start coming out is that uh, a thing? yeah i mean it's no, I mean, it's just like regular tv shows and movies you know there's Do lulls they come out in the fall? i mean some of them yes i guess i some, mean but you said not all of them season it's, it, as if all anime comes out it's one of the anime seasons it's like i guess like i don't know i don't i, I don't i don't fish but there's different I fishing think, seasons i assume there are, I mean, but, like, yeah exactly those, see? yeah i mean I, it same... used to be more of a thing when things were coming out like on tv tv you know yeah and like and usually seasons would start in the fall yeah or like uh, a season yeah. would be over the summer etc. but now there's yada, just yada, yada, times know? where like it's like the beginning of summer um the beginning like the beginning of each season kind of like correlates with movies and entertainment bringing stuff out depending on what like section of entertainment you're in unless you're like music in which case like they just wait 12 years and then they release it out because that's 12 classic. years well yeah okay i mean you know, I don't come know on. what bands you're listening to but uh excuse me no <laughs> I was about to. No, no I'm Some not fucking gonna. time capsule ass bands. <laughs> yeah. Some tool fans over here waiting for you. Know, years well, now. yeah, I was about to say <laughs> tool. Uh. <laughs> Well, we can't all be uh, that Robert Rodriguez movie that he put in a box for a th- hundred years. Fucking piece of shit. Um, in case you didn't know about that. Uh, but the other thing is also Castlevania will be returning to Netflix for season two. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Castlevania was in, I don't want to say side scroller, but like, did you guys ever the play? Game? It, yeah. It was like, yeah, it's it, like, it was its, its own a, genre. It's yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Style. Where um, every part of the map was open to you you just possibly couldn't make you needed to develop yeah. skills by progressing through different parts of the game or like get different items to, yeah yeah or in order to make it to certain sections but you were not it's not like a linear story you have yeah, to figure exactly. out where to go exactly right, right, right. um yeah in castlevania the uh so like a horizontal maze yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a platformer and like a side scrolling fighting yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. uh but the they uh, that's you know but that's old news what they made um but netflix released an anime Based on which is it. also moderately the ba- old news, but yeah, the new season's coming out. Right? Yeah, uh, the story is about a vampire hunter who's fighting to save a save a besieged city from an army of you know demons and vampires controlled by Dracula himself. And when it was released, I didn't like it- the first season of the anime very much, or at least really? I didn't remember it very well because like. I was like, oh, I should go finish that sometime. And then I went back on Netflix and it was like, oh, I did finish that. Oh, yeah. I was I about to say. I guess I just uh, didn't care. It was, <laughs> it was quickly. Um, well, I would say that, like, honestly, it was quickly well reviewed. Um, mm-hmm. At least from my perspective, like, the animation was smooth and everything. The voice acting was really on key. My father, who does not like anime, loved it. I was just watching it one night, and I was like, I can change it. He was like, no, just watch it, you know? And he actually got upset when he found out, because fun fact, guys, there's only four episodes that were released as part of the first <laughs> season, each half an hour long. These are, like, Game of... I think th- they'd at least do, like, six. Yeah, yeah I was... Right? Excuse me, like, guys. I was, I was expecting... hour-long episodes, you better make more than four. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that's some Sherlock 
like shit, but at least their episodes are like an hour and a half. You know, I was expecting a standard 12 episode yeah. at least 10, and they yeah. gave us four, and I thought it was like, really... Like, at that point, just make it a movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, but, so anyway, they released it and instantly got a lot of positive feedback, and on the same day, they renewed it for a... Um, second season? Yes, a second season. And then yeah. we didn't hear anything about it for like a year and a half. And then all of a sudden, Netflix is like, oh, by the way, we're having a second uh, season. This one will be eight episodes. At least they told us the amount of episodes. That's like two That's more double. seasons. Wow, yeah, it's <laughs> twice as much. That's Maybe like one whole they're season. They're really just like, you know, they had this plan all along just because they're like, oh, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to only put out four episodes. So then when we put out a still very small eight episodes, it'll be really exciting for people because they'll be like, holy shit, eight episodes? We only got four last time. Maybe next time they'll do 16 and it'll just keep <laughs> doubling. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck I it. love it. And then it'll go to like 10 seasons and be longer than Naruto. Oh. Uh, well, one, nothing could be longer than Naruto. Would that be a uh, bad thing? Let's, no. Let's I'm stop saying, that I'm just right saying, you don't, you don't think that that exponentially or that like doubling every single time oh, would yeah, make I it. Think it would, if it was 10 <laughs> seasons that would be ridiculous like, for sure but i don't even yep. feel like doing the math on that but it'd be a lot <laughs> uh yes but no i'm still i'm very excited for it i really liked it and i was actually like i said super upset that there was only four episodes of this wonderful series yeah, especially when 48 obviously yeah. Yeah, that especially seems like when, other people might have had the same complaint because they're doing yeah. more this time. Now it just kind of annoyed me how they like renewed it, like literally the same day the news broke that they renewed the renewed yeah. it for a second season, and then they just didn't tell anything about it us about it for a while, and I was like, no, 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 no nothing, no hints, no anything. You fucking pieces of shit. Um, All right, you got about a minute and a half. Yeah, I, I know. Actually, no, I don't. I have about a minute and a half about now. So I had four seconds, but I've already wasted that telling you. Um, <laughs> anyway, for the other thing is that I would like to say is that they recently on the twentieth, August twentieth, that is, okay. they released a um, cinematic trailer for the Sinking City. Yeah. Uh, which What's you that? know, uh, the Singing City is a new Lovecraftian inspired horror game. Oh, okay. uh, premiering in the 1920s. Uh, what kind of and game? like a video I'm game RPG. Not, yeah, it's a video game. I think it's like a shooter, maybe RPG. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I've been trying to follow it, but really, there's just like there was a gameplay trailer, and it seemed like an open world investigation game mm. with some like action abilities put in there. And it's really trippy because all of crafting is really circular and trippy. <laughs> yeah. And I would highly recommend you go out and find the Death May Die uh, trailer. It's on YouTube. You can also find it like on IGN and any, any place where like gaming news is found and watch it. It's pretty one. It's visually impressive. However, it's like a CGI cinematic trailer. So I like, don't like it's not actual in-game footage. But still, uh, it's got me interested. And before I was kind of not interested because I actually confused the first trailer because there is also fun fact a Call of Cthulhu game yeah, was coming really out. Confused. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and that one's actually coming out in October as well. So that's like two mm. stories for the price of one. <laughs> Fucking so games yeah, games. so like yeah, I actually like I said like like Pat said because Call of Cthulhu as I believe was announced for it, and it I saw a Sinking City uh trailer. I thought oh wow cool Call of Cthulhu trailer. Oh they must have changed <laughs> the name the Sinking City. Well there is a it's whole thing like, about the ocean. So when like way way back when right um there was like a fucking there was a trailer for avatar right like the james cameron avatar oh right? there's avatar and they they said avatar first right and i was like oh shit they're making a last airbender movie last airbender. and then it was that and i was like that wasn't the last airbender and then like right after that the, you were, you the were... trailer for M. Night <laughs> uh last airbender movie came on because i think those movies i guess came out relatively around the same time and i was like well that was weird uh <laughs> that's a shame jeffrey because yeah, you got I mean, your hopes up <laughs> twice and then you were given a you know uh avatar the last Airbender yeah. movie that's yeah. that's yeah. a yeah. basically that's, just shoved his fist in your ass and ripped out your intestines with that movie so that is basically what happened yeah but that was not that's the, how i felt the that point of this movie. particular story All right, so that's kind of the news that i have uh call of cthulhu will be october 30th and then i believe um the Sigmund city will be released it just says 29 uh oh i got I got March, March yeah, 2019. 2019. Actually, I, it actually says here March 21st, 2019. But as we know, things.
things are scheduled to change. Um, Castlevania. I just can't believe both of these got greenlit at the same damn time. I think they're different companies. I don't think anyone was like, ah, but you definitely know that someone in someone yeah, else's yeah. room was like, they like burst through to like to the creative team and they were like, John. And it was like, what are you, why? You just burst in. We're, we're having a meeting about the sinking city. <laughs> you are not going to believe this shit about Call of Cthulhu. What? I mean, what about? I feel like there's probably a lot of pitches for Cthulhu based games submitted every year that just don't get greenlit. You know? Yeah. Like, but that's, oh, that's, I'm sure. It's easy to me that both got greenlit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of like my news, so let's move right. on now to chat. Let's do it. All right, boys. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some fucking speculation on uh, on new characters that might be released for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. Is it right. Waluigi? Waluigi's coming? It's not Waluigi. Well, then I don't <laughs> really uh... see why we're going to spend 12 minutes talking about this. <laughs> Uh, full disclaimer for the fucking listeners right now. Um, there is this no Waluigi. episode is being recorded uh, a week before <laughs> release. Um, so we're what is it? Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Wait, like re- like the full release of the game? No, of fucking oh, okay. of the episode. Of this episode. Oh, I was I was like, wow! I could have sworn that was. <laughs> That's not until December. Right? Yeah, I was about to say like, I, yeah. I could have no, sworn, it's like, not until like, December. Sorry, yeah, no, this this episode is being recorded on the 7th of September, and uh, that's notable because there was Seven. apparently supposed to be a Nintendo Direct released today, but it was postponed. Oh my god, no, it was supposed to be last night. Yeah, it was supposed to be last night, but it was postponed because of uh, the earthquake stuff in right. Japan. Yeah, What's so it's direct? very possible that before this episode goes out that there might have been this direct release, so, you know. We'll see if you're correct. We'll then. see if What's I'm correct. What's a direct right. release? So, I... I how I kind of want to do this, I'm just going to list off right now 10 characters that I think are possibilities. Um, Real quick. And maybe you guys can tell me which ones you want me to elaborate on, because some of them okay. would Question. not take a lot of time. Can but... you do them in reverse order of likelihood? Reverse mm-hmm. order of likelihood. Uh, okay, <laughs> I don't... Like... Question. Sure. Uh, I don't have yeah, them wait. ordered in likelihood right now i just yeah, have but like, but, uh, off the top of your head put them guys in question order. okay yeah uh, yes keenan question uh, what is a nintendo direct oh nintendo direct like nintendo puts out like every once in a while they'll put out like a. Uh, I think this one was supposed to be like half an hour of just like updates on games sometimes announcements for new games basically you yeah. remember it's like when, a press conference yeah it's okay. like a press conference you That's remember cool. when uh king k rule and simon belmont and richter got announced that was in a nintendo direct oh interesting i like yeah. okay yeah. So, like, you know how Xbox and PlayStation have E3 presentations? Yes. Nintendo puts out a Nintendo Direct, which is kind of like a mini E3. Maybe yeah, like yeah, Once yeah. every quarter. Whereas yeah. Microsoft and PlayStation only do it once a year. I right. see, I see. Because they got so much shit to announce. All right, in, in vague order of who I think is least likely to most likely. Uh, all right, I'm going to start off with Bandana D, or Bandana Waddle D from the Kirby franchise. Um... We've got Banjo and Kazooie from Hell yeah. from Banjo Kazooie. Uh, Isaac from Golden Sun. Uh, I don't really like that. But... Well, well, you know, uh, you got a whole Incineroar list? from Pokemon Sun and Moon. I always like that name. Uh, who would I put next? Um, God, you fucking made me order it, and now it's just going all <laughs> just over read the place. It. Uh, Skull Kid from the Legend of Zelda franchise. Uh, I would like that. Dixie Kong from the Donkey Kong franchise. No. Shadow the Hedgehog from Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Lame. Editor's note: A uh, hell yeah. Also, I guess I, this is a good place to note that um some of these are uh speculated to be echo fighters of other characters so yeah yeah that's why i don't understand why they don't just make it a, a skin instead of making a whole new character like just uh, put a yeah. sonic skin i mean is it not shadow. well i think that people would be kind of unsatisfied with that because shadow Maybe. doesn't really do exactly the same things as sonic does but anyway continuing on hey dr um, mario is a I doctor not talked he... about yet uh ken from Street Fighter. No. Uh, Isabel from Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. And lastly, Gino from Super Mario RPG. Um, Gino okay. is one that I do want to talk about because... Okay. That, well, that, who's that, Gino? Is he like a man, I assume? Is he his hat? Gino, no, Gino is... He's a little <laughs> puppet dude. Um, but like, so he, he may sound like kind of an obscure character, but like I've been watching a lot of videos on like speculation <laughs> on who might be selected. <laughs> and... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Gino, I, I think is well. Aside from some of the so, oh god, like Ken, what is Ken? He? I think is it Ken? I think is a given. Um, f- like comparatively, not obviously nothing's a given, but. Um, so Gino is from Super Mario RPG, which was the original game, which was the uh, only original game that he released. He was released in um, Pinocchio. one of the reasons that he is a popular choice is because it's been becoming like increasingly obvious from some of the other releases like King K. Rule and Ridley and Simon Belmont that the um, that the smash ballot that Sakura put out in 2015, which was uh you know basically for characters to be put as dlc in uh in smash 4 has seemed to be a very strong indicator of like what characters are being given the opportunity to join the fucking smash here and gino was a very popular character i think the most popular character was king k rule um and there was a lot of controversy in smash 4 because king k rule was not given a uh you know uh, was not DLC in Smash 4, um, but Gino and King K. Rule were both, like, given this sort of uh, consolation prize of being um, costumes for me fighters, which got a lot of people irritated, right? So now that King K. Rule is in, people are thinking, like, oh, Gino's got a pretty good chance to... Um, and one of the like things is he's so though was released in Nintendo in a Nintendo game. It was technically like licensed through Square Enix. But now that, we you know, Cloud is in the game, too, as you know, and he was a DLC in Smash 4. So that doesn't really say anything in his favor. So the biggest thing is that Gino was a really popular character in the uh, in the Smash 2015 ballot. Well, so is Waluigi, but I'm just saying. Yeah, but Waluigi. OK, like we could talk a lot about Waluigi. Would I like? Wally would you be in the game? Yes. But would I like Wally to be in the game given that people were threatening Sakurai to put him in the game? No. Like, I mean, I don't like that shit at all, for sure. I yeah. agree, but I mean, I don't want to be like, that's a thing that happens, but that's a thing that happens. It's like, no, it is. It shouldn't be a thing that happens. The thing that should happen... But, oh, I agree, it shouldn't. Like, don't threaten the man. Just be yeah. like, yo, it would be really cool if you but did I, this. But either way, like, we, we know that Waluigi is not going to be in the game because he's yeah. an assist trophy again. We've seen that. Um, So are there any... There are other few ones that i could talk about like ken is a pretty obvious choice as a uh, echo fighter of ryu since yeah, he basically is an echo fighter of ryu in his own game well that'd be weird because they don't do the same thing shadow would be pretty echoey of sonic with a few twists kind of like how ganondorf is an echo of well Captain ganondorf Falcon, is not an echo of captain falcon anymore so he was like a clone of captain falcon before it was like an official thing but like his yeah. moveset is totally different in this game i'm pretty sure oh really That's yeah cool. well because yeah. like I mean... they, so like the rules for echo fighters i think like i i don't think any characters are echo fighters of characters that aren't from their same franchise like they're not really doing that sort of thing anymore yeah because they're like actually naming them like oh 34 a or whatever you know what i mean lame so i want to like, see they wouldn't do like oh echo. captain falcon in, you know character 15 and ganondorf 15a because you'd be like what 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 those characters oh, okay. aren't you know what i mean so yeah ganondorf and captain falcon are not echo fighters of each other um i guess so are there any ones from that list that you guys want me to touch on uh i've got the a little list of like kind of reasons that people have been thinking that they're going to be chosen for each one of them editor's note shadow the hedgehog please but you i don't think we on isaac isaac because... so Okay, He's so one that I would not want necessarily. Who's I don't Isaac? know if I'd really want Isaac either. Um, some of the notable evidence for Isaac is that we haven't seen the return of his assist trophy in any of the trailers, which is one thing, which is not obviously like damning by any means, but um, or like super strong evidence, but it's something. Although, was his his assist trophy, was this his assist trophy not in Smash Four either? Uh, I didn't play Smash Four out okay. of pure principle. That's fair. Um, and the, one of the other big things is that, so there's been this pretty credible leaker named Virgiben who, uh, got a lot of things right already. Like he, he like days before the release of, uh, the last direct, he predicted Simon Belmont and, uh, Richter Belmont being, you know, uh, the new characters. And before that, that was kind of like an unprecedented thought because people weren't really considering, uh, third party characters to have like the possibility of having echoes yet before that. Like that was the reveal of that being a possibility. Yeah. Um, so he's gotten some stuff like that, right. Uh, and other stuff before that, I haven't looked into his whole history 
And he made some posts on Twitter, like saying that, like, oh, Golden Sun fans are right to be excited about Isaac. Like, maybe, maybe saying that Isaac is like, so I, I wouldn't put Isaac as like one of the strongest candidates on here. I think he's probably lower down on the list, but he does seem to be one that people are thinking might be a possibility. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I wouldn't throw all my money onto Isaac, but he's, he's notable. I guess my main concern is like, I haven't played any of the newer Golden Sun games. I've never played a Golden Sun game. Oh, oh. Oh, I do remember another piece for of evidence for Isaac is that okay. um, Sakurai put out a picture on Twitter of like a boss battle in Smash 4 that was like visually set up exactly like a boss fight in Golden Sun. Like it, like people have put comparison pictures of like it, it's like a picture of a bunch of the characters fighting the um, one of the monsters from Monster Hunter World. Because that's okay. going to be like a boss in there, right? And it's like it completely parallels like a, a like a snapshot of like the fight set up in Golden Sun. That was one of the other big things that made people think that Isaac might be a possibility. So like yeah, a little sneaky main, shit in there. I could be wrong, but I don't think any of the other characters have like. Oh nope, I'm wrong. Fire Emblem is a turn-based game too, so yeah. I was gonna say that like the turn-based thing kind of makes me iffy on yeah, but Fire Emblem him now having has enough like nine hundred people in it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I guess they're gonna have to take some creative. Also, I think that sing. I think that Super Mario RPG uh, for Gino might have also been turn-based. I actually I don't know, Weird. but I'm just worried about them finding enough like move set material stops, to yeah. make his move set. Yeah, but yeah, that's, his, that's his fair. fucking final smash or whatever if they still have those would be sick you'd probably call them like some genie or they some do shit. they do still have sma- final yeah. smashes they've shown some ones. baller genie stuff out of the ones that i'm most excited for like i think that bandana d on this list for me personally looks not as yeah not as not as likely but that's something i'd be really excited about because for a I while do. i've been saying like hey it would be really stupid if there was a Waddle Dee in Smash, and now it's like looking like an actual possibility because this yeah. specific Bandana Waddle Dee is was a, like a really popular character in the Smash ballet, and Sakurai is like you know one of the people who like created Kirby as a franchise. So people are thinking like, with this being the big big kabam fucking Super Smash Brothers the game, big Kirby, is, Kirby is likely to have another rep. Um, but yeah, we can talk about a few more of those later. But as Meta Knight when that shit came out. <laughs> If they fucking made Bandana Waddle Dee a broken character, like, that would be real rough. <laughs> I would really like to see Banjo-Kazooie personally, but... Yeah, Banjo-Kazooie was also really popular on the on the Smash ballot, um, and there was something... some Oh, I guess people are th- saying, like, oh, in previously, they were thinking that Microsoft might have a hard... Like, there might be an issue with communicating with Microsoft, co- who owns Banjo-Kazooie, um, but since, like, Minecraft is now on the Switch and stuff like that... Yeah, and the fact that, yeah. like, Microsoft and Nintendo are the ones really pushing for <clears throat> crossplay and everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly, so I people feel are like thinking... Be fine. I feel like if Banjo-Kazooie is announced, that would be, like, probably one of the bigger ones announced, like, yeah. one of the last announced because that would be for kind sure. of a big deal but it's just like for me i think microsoft wouldn't really have an issue with it because yes they have the games on xbox right now as part of their rare replay yeah but they also went ahead and started working on ukulele and like released that as its own game so they're i feel like they're more on the ukulele flow than the banjo kazooie flow hmm. do they announce rights so I think they'd be cool with it. Yeah, do they announce all the characters before release or i think sakurai did say that th- that that I don't know if they did in the past, but this time they are announcing all characters all right. before release. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how they used to do it, like with the secret characters and melee and stuff, if they announced yeah. before that. But I'm 90% sure for the last Smash, they told us everybody that was going to be in it, besides like the DLC they announced later with Bayonetta and. Um, wasn't there another one? Cloud? Mewtwo? There was a lot know. of DLC. There were there yeah. was Ryu. Bayonetta is the only one I know off the top of my head. Ryu, what? Cloud, Mewtwo. But anyway, yeah, let's uh but let we we can move on. We can talk about this a bit later if we want to, but Editor's note. What about Shadow the Hedgehog? Yeah, so, uh, Pat, what do you, what do you got to say? All right, so, earlier this week, as in the week that we are recording, 
as in the day specifically of September 4th, <laughs> the world of Destiny 2 changed forever. Oh, yeah. I heard that. That's right, motherfuckers. Spoilers. Destiny 2 Forsaken launched, and everything is right in the world yet again. Wait, it's it's right at it's, all the things I've been seeing about it are are things that are, are you know, like, it'll never be the same. Yeah, yeah. which is good, because nobody liked the game at launch. So. <laughs> really? I thought, uh, I thought Destiny 2 was better received than the first. So, so critics critics rated it very well but if you look on like metacritic and everything the user score is in the low 60s high 50s mm. so for a triple a title that's not good all right um, yeah. that's true the biggest problem people have with destiny 2 was were, it was twofold the grind took fucking forever and then once you got done with the grind there was nothing to do like hmm. you would do the raid you do escalation protocol you do your milestones for the week and then it was up to you to be motivated enough to just keep playing crucible over and over and over which is the, the multiplayer mode but um destiny 2 forsaken has dropped there's a whole new raid which was the biggest th- problem i had with the destiny 2 base game every single time in destiny 1 that they released some dlc they gave us a brand new raid like a whole new location whole new boss fights new mechanics everything nice. in destiny 2 all they did was add a different route to take on the other raid that already existed Lame. so while there were new boss fights and everything the location was the same the general purpose and like everything else was the same but uh, it was still fun, in my opinion. Just it wasn't as exciting as getting a whole new uh, place to go. Um, I agree. So yeah, wh- just because I'm kind of unfamiliar, like what what are raids basically? In, in okay, so Destiny? raid like is... it, it adds another section of the map and new missions and stuff like that. Yeah. So usually it'll be based on the DLC that just came out. They'll uh-huh. take the main villain or something from that and make that like the overarching villain. And you'll go to a new place. Um, in Destiny 2's case, it was a ship that was um, commanded by this guy whose name was Callus. This is General Callus. And the entire time you're fighting for his enjoyment, you're going through different layers and like uh, rooms of different boss fights that are not as hard as his boss fight. And you have to learn. There will be puzzles to solve. There will be really hard enemies to kill. And you have to do it in specific orders or your entire team dies Mm, the big thing about uh raids is you have six player fire teams normally you can only have three people in your fire team but raids are extra hard so you get extra people which is really fun um because there are the way the game is like structured there are three different classes okay so like you get a chance to have either two titans two warlocks and two hunters so you can mix and match those and it gives you a lot of flexibility with your fire team whereas if you only have three you sometimes lose out on a hunter when you have two um warlocks and a titan with you or like right just like general general team balance stuff yeah Yeah. but not only are they giving us a brand new top to bottom raid new location they're fixing one of the most annoying parts about raids so obviously you're gonna die a lot in raids they're very hard when you die in destiny you lose all the ammo you just spent because that makes sense like you died whatever <laughs> all right you lose all of your abilities that you have blown you gotta wait for those cooldowns they added a new system where before you go into a raid you can buy something called a raid banner and before you go into a fight you can drop the banner and uh, every when you die the next time you can use that banner to reset to the spot that you were at before you died so it's you like a little save point. back yeah you get your abilities back you get your ammo back you get everything so you have like more consistent damage output to the boss so you don't have to waste time doing like ammo runs you don't have to just like hmm. run out kill all the small things yeah it feels like, like if you die back. enough then your whole team is left with no resources to finish yeah, the boss takes- a long time to get back to that level so a lot of times people will literally they will wipe on purpose which means everybody will die so that they can just keep <laughs> farming ammo and farming yeah. super and it just it's like it's the biggest grind it adds at least like 20 minutes per round and it was really annoying so yeah. they fixed that which i'm very psyched for it they also so, so is that what? May, maybe i just don't understand how this is implemented but um does that change it for like all the other types of raids you can do too or is it like i think so but they're not really um but you don't really have a lot of reason to go back yeah. okay i mean you do have reasons to go back because um it'll it drops certain guns that don't drop anywhere else mm, okay. if you want to farm for those which brings me to my next point they're also making guns have random stat rolls now oh that's kind of so cool. you can have two of the same gun 
one so that have different perks is that that's kind of like um fucking what's it called borderlands yeah borderlands yeah right? it's like borderlands um which is really nice because um for the longest time it was you get one gun and it's the same no matter what how many times you drop it so like it, it just it became way too easy to get the perfect roll right, on a right. weapon because yeah. there was only one roll yeah so now see. you can collect five different guns that are all the same gun but one has a different perk that you like just and adds a whole new element to the it, game yeah basically. it adds a lot more grind which actually is in my opinion good because once you get to that late game well, it's like a different kind of do, different kind of grind. it's a different kind of grind yeah. yeah for sure it's a little more yeah. rewarding in my point if not more annoying but it feels more personal the fact that they made all these guns have random rolls though means that uh, they had to change a lot of how the the weapon infusion system works so the way guns and gear work in destiny is they all have a power level mm -hmm. so as you your character increase in level your gear will also increase while you play more so that right now the soft cap is 500 <laughs> with a hard cap of 600 it's power. like you're going on a little adventure with your fucking gun and it's just like man i feel like we've really had some good experiences together well, yeah. blammy your gun learns <laughs> that's the difference though is like you gain experience like going on adventures your gun gains experience or power by taking other more powerful gear and infusing it into that gun what the so it's alive basically yeah. it's a slave <laughs> you've got so some back... sort of fucking parasitic gun i mean i guess kind of but it doesn't feed on you so i guess it's more like a a, a, a symbiosis. Yeah, it, it's it's just absorbing it into the. Uh, That's kind of cool, though. I like that blob. It is really cool. But right now, back when Destiny Two launched, it was really easy to infuse stuff. It just cost the in-game currency of Glimmer, which is not like you don't pay for Glimmer. You get that while playing the game. Mm -hmm. And these things called legendary shards, which you get can, from playing the game. Can you pay and... for Glimmer? No, oh. you can pay for silver, which will oh, get okay. you cosmetic items. But that's it. Oh, okay, that's um, good. You so. You use Glimmer and these things called Legendary Shards to um, infuse guns. Now, though, you have to use Glimmer, Legendary Shards, these things called Masterwork Cores, and some sort of resource from one of the planets or locations in Destiny. So it's a lot harder to infuse. So it's like pretty annoying when you're a low level mm -hmm. to infuse up. So p right now people are saying literally just use any gear whatsoever to get you to level 500. And then once you're there, then infuse into the gear that you like. So you only have to do it one time. Yeah. Um, because you can do it as many times as you want, as long as the thing that you're infusing into your gun is a higher level. And then it will increase up to that level. Gotcha. But gotcha. a good thing with all these other weapons that have different roles is if you have two of the same gun and you're infusing one into the other it costs significantly less than if you're infusing a different gun into it so it kind of um, wait sorry say that again so let's say i have two of the same gun okay but each has a different role like one has a different perk than the other oh okay yeah, yeah. and then and, so it costs less to infuse a gun with a, another version of itself than it does to, correct okay yeah that then makes it sense. does to take a different gun completely <clears throat> and infuse it in which i like because it encourages you to, to hold on to a a lot of different weapons to truly like test out which one has the best role right to like so do but you not same... do you not know what roles the guns have until you use them or do you like you see... have to i mean until you get the gun you it'll be random and then you pick it up you look in your inventory and you can see it gotcha 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 but like um before you get the gun it can be a mix of a bunch of different things like something that increases the range the stability the uh reload time the damage itself mm. um I like that it'll have a different perk that's this thing called like firefly makes people's heads explode which is cool that's if you get a precision kill it's pretty good um <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of different things like that but for people like me who are not the, the highest level right now, all I can really do is grind out these low things uh, and just... I'll grind out it, your it kinda, low it things, baby. Yeah. It just sucks <laughs> for me because I like to have a very specific loadout based on like my exotic gear, which exotic gear is special in that you can only have one piece of exotic gear for your armor and one piece of exotic gear for your guns. And then after that, everything else to be something else. So exotics are usually way more powerful and way more utility focused. Mm -hmm. So I really like having my exotics, but if I'm not going to infuse, I like into having them, your exotics too, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not going to infuse into my exotics, which is way more expensive than any other thing to infuse into, uh, then it's kind of like I don't get to play the game I want to play. For example, there's this. Um, there's this helmet for titans which is the class i like to play as mm -hmm. uh which resets your melee attack after you get a kill with your melee attack and there's also a new super for the titan 
where um, your melee attack is you go up into the air, you charge your fist, and you just slam into the ground, and it gives out this little, like, area of effect thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're fighting a bunch of, a bunch of like, little tiny, easy-to-kill enemies, you can literally just do that nonstop over and over and over and over, and it's really, really fun. I'll, I'll makes do you, feel you like nonstop a fucking badass. over and over and over, Pet. And it makes you feel like a badass. Uh, I was but hoping I you'd respond use, with the same little... I'm not responding yeet. with this shit. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> um, it just makes you feel really good about your character. It makes you feel strong. And without those exotic things, it's just like, okay, I guess I'm going to play through this game for a while. Not as powerfully as I can, but eventually you get to that point. So I guess it's worth it. It's just the grind is a little bit more intense now, but once it's over, it's way more worth it. That's fair. Yeah. And then I, they're adding a bunch of little things too. Like they added a game mode called Gambit which is really cool. I've it's heard a that. PvP, PvE hybrid. So you go in with three of your teammates, so it's a 4v4 kind of thing, and you're fighting against um, computer-controlled enemies for a while to get these, like, moats of some energy or some shit, and then you're supposed to bank those. And as you bank more and more, you start to mess with the other team, like you send in bosses for them to fight, and they can't deposit until they kill that boss. <clears throat> you also spawn the ability to like go through a portal and go fuck with them. Like You can go in and kill them, but they can also hmm. kill you too. Lame. And it's 4v1, so you gotta be a little bit careful and pick your battles wisely. Um, so, like, they added that in, and it's a really fun game yeah, type. sounds pretty I'm good. I'm interested to see how they can balance it out, because right now, the very end boss that you have to kill goes down pretty quickly, because people literally just save all their most powerful attacks, and then kill it in, like, 30 seconds. Oh, good on um, your so it doesn't quickly. really... I don't know what you said. <laughs> I was whispering into my mic that I'd go down on you really quickly. Oh, okay. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, they added that. They added um, this new kind of... There's was, there was a wave-based um, activity that you could do in the last game called... Or in the last iteration of the game, which was called escalation protocol and they added a new version of that which is really cool so all in all they gave you way more shit to do and changed a lot of the stuff that people didn't like about destiny 2 base game with forsaken i'm just pissed that you have to spend 40 bucks to continue this game <laughs> <laughs> destiny really sounds uh, like an abusive relationship of a fucking game i don't know why you people play oh it, it fucking is dude <laughs> anyway yeah it's the sunken sunken cost fallacy everybody bought the game already and they're just like well no i, I guess i have to keep paying to play it because i already spent this much but <laughs> Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, I just play it because all my friends play it and I like hanging out with my friends. All right. <clears throat> thank you. Me. Thank you, representatives, for your contributions to our broadcast. Uh, let's determine whose stories were of the utmost important impact or interest. And we'll decide who the winner of the Gold Star Student Award should be. Uh, do we have a consistent Gold Star for this one, or do we make this one up every time? No, you make it up every time. Uh, it you feels like the common briefing program should be like consistent. I, a I golden don't know. Yeah. Briefcase. I mean, well, because it's like the so golden desk. The uh, reason that it's like this now is because we had that one episode where Eddie couldn't make it as the host, so we ended up being hostless, and we ended up voting. And then Colin misremembered and thought that we always did that, so he changed the guide to do that. Editor's note, I did not. I I just like it better this way. So really, you know, whatever you feel like. Well, I would if say... If you can find something that relates to all three of these things, that, that would be fucking good on you, Keenan. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even all video games. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you talked about Castlevania. So I, I was going to say, I was going to say the the golden television because all these require a monitor. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. I like that but very you know, loose connection. <laughs> Um, does it have to give it to one of you, or is it no, like we, a particular so story within? The way that he, the way that he wrote it is that we're supposed to, we're supposed to each, yeah. like, pick which of the other two domains we cared about the most, and then whoever has the most, like, points, I guess, at the end is the person who gets the gold I star. I suppose. All right, so, uh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, Jeffrey, uh, so who, who, whose, whose story did you feel was the most important, or um, most impact, or most interesting, not including your own? Uh, I'm not going to gonna lie i don't have a very close connection to either of these things um that's unfortunate but i do feel like i am more likely to watch Yu Yu Hakusho than to play destiny oh yeah i have anime experience and i'm i'm not a gamer i'm really not despite the fact that i talked about smash but... you can put it on a resume you know experience anime you know <laughs> 
<laughs> I have experienced anime. <laughs> So uh, I'm gonna say that that I I had a little bit more connection to to Keenan's domain, though it was still fun, despite my lack of connection to Destiny. It was still fun to hear about the change in mechanics, because I am sort of interested in the ever changing saga of fucking how that game evolves, and people are like, oh, it's terrible, but we still play it. <laughs> I'm I'm just impressed with everyone with, with with the first Destiny. I'm still impressed with how everyone was like the gameplay, amazing. The story, there's not one. Not existed. <laughs> Until yeah. the Taken King came out, it was pretty not good. Oh, I, I just love the joke about, I could have explained this to you, but I won't. Like, can we just talk about how that fucking game is like 80% DLC? <laughs> Dude, yeah, when she said, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain, I literally, like, wanted to punch myself in the face. That's really early, That's isn't what it? it felt like the game was doing <laughs> yeah. to me. Isn't that really but, early in the game? Because I think I played a little bit of, of, it's of pretty Destiny, early, yeah. and, like, I, I got to that moment. And then I heard the guy read a Pinker D- Peter Dinklage, and then I was like, well, I don't really see what appeal the game Dude, has anymore. Honestly, Nolan North <laughs> is a much better voice actor than Peter Dinklage. Listen, listen, Peter listen, Dinklage listen. is an amazing actor, but his voice voice acting needs a lot of work i don't know i enjoy his voice acting however i will say that nolan north is like one of the three voice actors who does everything in video games so i'll give credit where credit's due shout out to but nolan north and troy Dinklebot, baker so destiny Dinklebot, is what Dinklebot Dinklebot no land droid because no like, oh that's pretty good too all right I, yeah, I, I guess, I guess. <laughs> so yeah final final answer is that um I, yeah, I'm more you connected have. to you All right. the show than uh, Destiny. Uh, I am hardcore aboard the Super Smash train, so I'm going to go with good buddy Jeff on this one. Even though I'm a Melee purist, I have hope that Smash Ultimate uh, will bring me Melee is such the new trash, generation. though, with like, the shield shit. What about it? Uh, it's, just, it's just trash. It's whatever. But hey, you know, let people have some fun. Shield and, what, what, what Keenan's different? just trying well, to poke bears right now. You know. <laughs> Shielding is fine. Was it called Wave Dash or some shit? Wave you know? Dash. That's yeah. a, oh well, that's bullshit too. You know. But they put that in the new one. <laughs> you like, know, you gotta admit it's, they it's, built it's, it in this it's time. really but <laughs> it's really rough when like a game you really like was better designed by fans. Project M. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, but Project M is making Brawl more like Melee. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you can, no, hey, it's hey, 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 it's that's okay if Melee is trash, Project man. You can just admit that everything you love is terrible. I personally prefer Brawl to Melee, but that's also because I'm a dirty cash, because that's just like what I grew up on, basically. I'm a dirty cash. I played more, more Brawl than, than Melee. I grew up on N64 Smash, but that shit was real tough to get into once the game <laughs> came out. Yeah. Once there was graphics at all. <laughs> once there was a controller that didn't have three fucking hand positions, yeah. you had to smooth between, I was, I was all aboard that GameCube upgrade. Some, some fucking Martian is like, wow, this one is so ergonomic Designed for my weird. (laughs) (laughs) If it's so so well at all three of my hands. Um, (laughs) Anyway, uh, well, those are from Venus. No, Mars, Mars, and then Venus have three eyes. That's a. That's that's a that's a. Oh, is that Twilight Zone or that's Twilight Zone? Yeah. Where are the aliens from Total Recall from with the three other body parts? Uh, They're not aliens. They're mutants. Actually, if you watch the movie, you would know that. Same. Uh, Oh, that shit, bro. Yeah. I, don't, I think only one of them had three other body parts. I mean, she had like three breaths. Yeah, that's the. You know, I mean, no, I think. Uh, I mean, no. That's the joke! I think he had like a, he had, like, a, a gross arm, but it was kind of in two. No, it was just two fingers. Anyway. Um, How do you feel, Kanan? Do I. I mean, I feel a little biased because clearly I represented the best. Uh, however, I will say that despite uh, it letting me down in the past, I will have to say that I enjoyed the Smash update because as much as. I feel that Waluigi was, you know, shunned, slighted, if you were, slighted. <laughs> uh, especially with everyone's here and the whole assist trophy thing. I hope one day Waluigi will be <laughs> you redeemed. Got, you gotta admit, that was good. kind of a baller move on Sakurai's part, though. Just be like, oh, everyone's like so down about Waluigi, and then he's just like, not only are we gonna show that Waluigi is still an assist trophy, but he's the introduction to the the ability to kill assist trophies. Do I, do I <laughs> That's love really funny. all the memes about it, and all like the little one-shot comics I've been reading about it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, do I enjoy Wallaluya? Uh, yes. yes. Oh, that's so good. I There's love a bunch of good stuff that's come from it, however. Uh, but once again, I also, like, I agree with, you know, what Pat said. That it sucks that it happened, though. That, yeah. uh, like, a large, like, a, apparently a large fan base. Because I've been for years just, like, I haven't been, like, paying attention to it. But for years, I've been like, oh, man, I would be great if Wallaluya was in. It just, I didn't know about, like, these, like, how these toxic gamers were acting. Until yeah, it's kind of crazy recently. to me that people were like more toxic about Waluigi than apparently like any other character. Like yeah, I know that it feels people probably weird. were toxic about other characters, but like that it was such a thing, it became like a meme thing. I think it just became a meme a little bit, and then yeah, Twitter just rolled. Yeah, that was another thing I didn't talk yeah. about is that other other like popular joke characters on the Smash ballot were like Shrek and Goku, which were kind of funny. <laughs> Can you imagine Shrek just like? <laughs> well, I mean, they're making uh, like. What if what if his like side B is he calls in Donkey and just throws him at the other dude? I don't know. <laughs> His smash is all the game together. Would, you know? And then yeah. Donkey just rolls through, flipping waffles at everybody. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's, uh, okay, so Jeff, you received two golden monitors, so you then get the golden monitor, I suppose. Yeah, boy. You know, they combine a lot like the infusion, uh, process from Destiny. You infuse <laughs> into one better TV, you know? Um, all right, now the outro. No, wait, no. Yeah, yeah, now the outro. Yeah, we, uh, now that we've rated ourselves, let's talk about you, Liz. Let's get real close. Let's get comfy. We uh we got a couch here, we got a fireplace, we got a bearskin rug. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about how's your day going. Uh, each cycle we track people who engage us online and enter them into a raffle. The winner of which gets to choose a topic for a future episode. It's pretty exciting, you know. We get to learn you people, you people get to learn us. You know, it uh, it bridges the gap. Uh, using a die, we will now randomly select an entry. Uh, and now I am pleased to announce. One second. Well, thirteen. 14, 15, I'll roll a d20 and then re-roll the last If it pass. goes, yeah, re-roll if it goes higher. Yeah, that's a good. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little biased and I hope a four comes out. If a four does come out, I'm going to show you on my camera that I didn't rig it. Who's four? Your my girlfriend? girlfriend. Yep. Yeah. Ha. Great. I crit failed. So Rich Baldess. Oh, Rich maybe. Baldess. He, he submitted a user question in yeah. a previous episode, I think, in the Inglorious Bastards episode. All right. Uh... I'm sorry, Abby. I love you. I tried, but... The uh, the winner is Rich Baldus. Rich uh, Baldus. Which Rich Baldus? What a name! You sound like you should be a German commander in you know, eleventh century Germanic you know, uh, well obviously Germany or perhaps France. Perhaps you're part of the weather wars in France. What if his name? What if his name actually isn't like Richard Baldus, but his name is just Baldus? Like he's like a share, and he's just describing himself by being rich. You know? Oh, you're right. <laughs> like, Maybe it's a mono name. He's a rapper. Just... <laughs> oh, uh, in which case. Rich um, little Rich Baldus, uh, we're sorry Lil. if we have uh, mistaken your mononym as a duonym. Or just totally mispronounced your name. That's yeah. also possible. That's also it possible. It could be Baldies. We'll, we'll totally or acknowledge Baldies. that. Please send us a phonetic spelling. Yeah, uh, just like send us a video of you pronouncing your name for us. That'd be great. <laughs> but you have to wear a top hat while doing it. I'm sorry. It's it's a legality thing. Uh, <laughs> listen, we'll reach out to you soon to plan your upcoming episode and talk about the purchase of a top hat we can read one out to you uh thanks so much for <laughs> listening and we'll hope to see you next chance we get uh now that about wraps it up it's the end of the episode thank you for listening to the common geeky program or in this case the common briefing program i'm your host <laughs> keenan Cody. And if you really want to find me all you have to do is take a large wendy's fries and heat those up at 12 30 at night and i will appear like magic again Wendy's. i've been enjoyed <laughs> by Bro. I've been joined by Bro. Uh my name bro, is Jeff. Bro. Uh you can find me my name on is Jeff. My name is Jeff. Oh, that joke's never been made before. Uh <laughs> you still, can... every time you say it, dude, you always say my name is Jeff. I have been joined my by name Jeff, is Jeff. What Free. Do you want me? That's what I call that's You're what like, I'm hey, called. I'm Jeff. You don't have to say my name is. It's just automatically okay, makes my brain go, my name is Jeff. <laughs> Has anyone else made anyway, a Jeff Free joke in knowing you? Wh- why the fuck would anyone else make that joke? <laughs> because it's hilarious and also going to be a great point in my campaign to get you, you oh, know, Jesus. you uh, freed from the corrupt system. <laughs> but my name's not Jeff in our <laughs> campaign. Anyway, you can you can find me on uh, Instagram. I post some art stuff on there. My my tag handle. I don't know what you do on Instagram. Is uh, things Instagram. I wish existed. 
with a dot between each word. So yeah, that's, that's really uh, long. Yeah, wink. What? So that's really long. Wink. Oh, so you're allowed to make sexual advances on me, but I'm not allowed to make sexual. Guys, advances this on is me. a clean podcast. Like four double standards, and you didn't respond to any of them. Wow, okay. rude! I, I, I had to, to keep respond. making them because I was broken hearted. Uh, no, he is the right to do that. Uh, and we've also been anyway, joined by. It's your boy, Patty Ice. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Patty Ice Official. His first and... name is It's Your Boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. You know? Patty's yeah. my middle name and Ice <laughs> is my last name. Yeah, exactly. what, then is official like a title or? Yeah. No, it's his name. It's Greek. It's your boy. Four... You know, come on. It's your okay. boy. I sure, have why not? Names. Cool. Anyway. Thank you for all for listening. We love you. Zach. I, yeah, all right. I also uh, love give you. Give us more questions for the briefing episodes because it'll be fun. Um, next week, our host will our our host will be episoded by. Uh, no, next week <laughs> our episode will be hosted by Jeff. Jeff, what are you talking about then? Oh, well, golly gee, this is our this that this was a fun fucking episode. I mean, we haven't recorded it yet. What are you talking about? Um, uh, yeah. So next week we are is the result of our last listener poll. Um, it was. The topic was submitted by Samuel Thang. Are you sure about that? Thang? Tang? It's T-H-A-N-G. Pronounce it how you want. You know what? It was submitted by Samuel Tang. It was Samuel submitted Thang. by Samuel Thang. Colin, figure it out and edit the right one in. Editor's note. No. Um, and the topic <laughs> I hope he does a really submitted... modern inversion of the Thanks, last name, damn. you know? <laughs> the, uh, Thank you. the topic that was submitted was Dota 2. And we talked a little bit about toxic uh gameplay fandoms i mean we are going to talk a little bit about toxic gameplay fandoms with ryan and chowder it was uh it's going to be a fun time because i'm totally experienced in dota 2 at all (laughs) anyway (laughs) that's rough uh anyway thank you uh when when will that be uh i'll be be sure be sure to check that out next friday which is on the 21st of september 21st of september great uh it's a holy day in many religions i assume uh both known (laughs) and unknown uh and follow us if you can on facebook or twitter at geeking program any engagement you guys have so just follow the post tagging us tweeting hashtag cgp uh we'll enter you into our raffle which as said before uh we'll you know let you basically control our lives for you know a week or so basically uh reviewing us on apple products is a critical help to growing our show and we'll read our new new reviews on the air anyways as always thanks for listening subscribing sharing living breathing talking and most of all not double parking everything and we'll talk to you you know we'll talk to you guys next week sleep Call well. it right now gino for smash let's go you know uh by the way uh, yeah sweet. check under your bed because there's definitely something there all right <laughs> nice <laughs> Bye. 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 This episode of the Common Geeking Program is hosted by Keenan Kodish, featuring the representatives Jeff Levitt and Patrick Brem. This episode is sponsored by Infusion. Tired of being mocked by all your peers for all the hard work you do? Squeeze them all together and make one superior podcast boy. The podcast is created and produced by Colin Ketchin and Jeff Levitt, with this episode edited by me, Colin Ketchin, as if you couldn't tell, and featuring original music also by me. Now next week, Jeff is going to be hosting an episode about Dawn of the Ancients 2 by Valve. I am very excited to see how that turns out. Be sure to tune into that next week, as I definitely will be. But in the meantime, thank you for listening to this. Uh, do we do a raffle? Are we doing a raffle? Oh, oh, right. We're supposed to fuck. Jesus, I didn't even know we had to do this. We're supposed to fuck? We're spo- yeah, we're supposed to fuck. We have to look at the the raffle people and select a winner uh, by rolling a rolling a die. I forgot that that was now a responsibility of ours. Um, let me open up my notes. Why is it not in general?
I don't know where it is. It's in the the recording guide. It's uh, first read um, the vote for the winner, and then we rated ourselves. Raffles. Okay, for so these are we're looking over the cycle nine. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's what we would be doing Uh, because you know the die out. How many are there? So this is uh one two. Wait, we can't fucking put Ryan on this list. What is this shit? I see cycle ten. I see cycle ten. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's right below cycle nine. Oh, 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 it must oh, not be on the document that I'm on. Okay, you, you count them up. I, I don't have those names. Listener engagement? Uh, yeah. Scroll. No, whatever. On, just how many? Okay. I'm so I'm not on the drive thing. I'm on a three, notes three, document. Four, five, six, seven, yeah, we uh now that we rate ourselves, let's talk about you list. Let's get real close. Let's get comfy. 